All right. So welcome to Talking Tuesday, Q&A with the Storage Queens. So tonight we have quite a few questions that we're going to be answering. One is about making your nails stronger. We're going to talk about binge eating. We're going to talk about parabens and we're going to talk about starches. Okay. So the first one is, comes from Susan, Starch Queens member, Susan Cooper. And she says, my fingernails are all breaking below the cuticle. What can I do to prevent breakage? So that, this is a great question, Susan. Thank you for asking that. One of the ways that we can help is to change, you know, obviously what we're eating. And going plant-based is going to be one of the, the best ways to do this. So let's talk about some of the nutrients that you might want to have to make strong nails. Okay. Because, you know, one of the ways that you can do to help improve is by eating certain nutrient-rich foods. In fact, doctors actually, when you go in for a physical, they look at your nails because it's an indicator of overall health. Since your body sends nutrients to your vital organs first, your nails are often the last to get the good stuff. <laughs> so that means like you're kind of malnourished and it shows up in your fingertips. So it takes six months to regrow an entire nail. So keep in mind so that once you start this, it's going to take at least a minimum of three months to start to see at least half a nail, you know, get through and to see changes. So this is not going to happen overnight, folks. Okay. So let's talk about a couple of these things that you can use. Sweet potatoes are very high in vitamin A, vitamin B5, B6, thiamine, niacin, riboflavin, and they're also the cancer-preventing carotenoids. Great source of vitamin C, which produces the collagen and helps keep your skin, hair, nails looking healthy. Keratin is a key structural material that helps make the outer layer of the human skin. And it's also a key component in our hair and nails. So another food, this one is amazing. Pineapple is one of the best sources of vitamin C and overall nutrients. It helps your body digest protein easier to this. It has a special enzyme called bromelain. It supports your body, you know, the, the way your body uses protein more effectively to help you grow your nails, you know, longer, stronger. The vitamin C in the pineapple also supports the collagen production in the body by supporting tissue growth and development. So collagen is produced through efficient protein intake. So this makes pineapple a all in all win-win for this. Another one is spinach. So the dark green veggie, okay, has the vitamin E, iron, the B vitamins, the folate, the vitamin A, all of which benefit, you know, nail strength and growth. Because as we start to age, our skin loses its elasticity. And spinach is really rich in the vitamin C, and it's essential for the production of the collagens which aids in our skin elasticity and stops your skin from looking that scaly, dry, you know, weather-beaten kind of looking face. And the vitamin A in spinach also helps contain antioxidants, which keeps your skin cells healthy. Okay, so we've got some more. Um, cacao is another good one, okay? Cacao, and it's in the, in the raw form. I'm not talking about the, you know, the sugary chocolate stuff because... The sugar actually tears down collagen and keratin in the body by promoting glycation, which is the aging of the cells. So you don't want to be doing more damage. So raw cacao is the best, and it's a great source of magnesium, iron, zinc, and it's also full of calcium and B vitamins. Chickpeas is another good one. It's got protein, zinc, B vitamins, which are all critical for beautiful, strong, healthy hair and even clear skin. Brazil nuts are another one. And I know Dr. Gregor has a video that he talks about, you know, eat four Brazil nuts a month. <laughs> That's it to help, you know, you don't need to have a lot of them. And again, this is not something you have to eat every day, but you want to make sure that you're including some of these things in your diet. Chia seeds he recommends, are another one. He actually, he recommends two per week to help lower cholesterol as well. Okay. Of the of Brazil so, nuts. And, okay. So chia seeds are alkaline forming. We talked a little bit about that. I can't remember if it was in the Q&A or in our start. We have the Starch Queens webinar and we talked about, you know, keeping your body more on the alkaline side and how you can do that. So chia seeds are very alkalizing. They are a great source of the calcium and protein. And the best part, you only need a small amount, like just a teaspoonful a day. 
And it also helps to build the strong bones, but it supports nail growth and the collagen production in your body. And I just want to talk about a few minerals. One is silica. And this delivers nutrients to the peripherals of the body, you know, the hair, skin, nails, that kind of thing. And foods to incorporate that contain this are like alfalfa, radish, romaine, lettuce, cucumbers, bell peppers, tomatoes, steel cut oats, millet, leafy greens. Those leafy greens keep coming back up as power, nutritional powerhouses. Biotin is also called vitamin B7. And it's one of the more well-known for hair, nails, you know, that kind of thing. And it's in a lot. It's one of the superstars in, in found in a lot of beauty products and hair, shampoo, things like that. And it's funny because the biotins were actually discovered because they were used to prevent horses' hoofs from splitting. So incorporate berries, spinach, mushrooms, legumes, avocados, and cauliflower for biotin. Vitamin E is another one. It promotes healthy blood circulation. So if you've got better blood circulation, that means that the nutrients are efficiently being distributed around the body. And remember that keratin we talked about that? Well, these protein cells accumulate as a result of circulation and nail growth, okay? Um, foods with zinc or silicone, okay? Low zinc levels have been known uh, or show that they're, they silicone? weaken your nails. Silicone. In plants. Yeah. Okay. So they weaken your nails. Low, low zinc levels weaken your nails, while silicon helps to fight the nail brittleness. Silicon silicone helps your, or silicone? Silicon helps your body to make the collagens, and it's a structural protein that's found in their hair and nails. So in, to get that, you're going to include your unrefined grains, you know, like oats especially, uh, as well as spinach, bananas, lentils, beans in your diet that are source of silicone nuts, chickpeas, that can help increase your zinc and silicone intake. Um, so, you know, you want to try and include a little bit of these foods every day. You don't want to have them try to eat them all every day. You just think of it as an overall view of what you're eating for the week. And once you start to do that, you know, hey, this is a basically, we're talking plant-based, you know, a plant-based diet. And you want to include these foods in place of foods, you know, the, the sugar-based the processed foods, animal-based proteins in your body. And once you do that, your body will start to rebuild itself again. Your cells are going to start to regenerate and tissues are going to start breaking down and your nails aren't going to constantly break, chip and tear at the slightest little tug. So there you go. Great so question, Susan. For the, so for those of you who are just signing on, the question was from um, Starch Queen member Susan Cooper. She asked how come her fingernails were brittle um, at the and breaking at the cuticle, and Jean was just explaining. So if you didn't catch the first part of the question, you can catch it in the replay. And it sounds to me, Jean, like if you eat a well-rounded, broad-spectrum, plant-based diet, you're going right. to get a lot of the, of the nutrients that you just explained um, to have healthy nails. So mine are growing fabulously, um, wonderfully. So that's a great question, Susan. Uh, Jody Henry is um, a member of Plant Based Chico, and she asked the question, and uh, this is a really good question. How do people on a plant based diet overcome binge eating? I haven't Ooh. figured that one out yet. So I, I'll take a, a first pass at that. Jean and I both are emotional eaters, and we can, yeah. you know, we both have lost weight. I'm at 105 pounds lost so far. Jean's at 100 pounds right there. So we have overcome these types of eating issues. And so the first thing I recommend to people who go plant-based is to understand that it is a, a journey in nutrition to heal your body from chronic disease. Okay, and then there's also these chronic diseases, heart disease, autoimmune disorders, obesity, so on. The, the list goes on and on and on. So eating whole food plant-based diet is, is to improve one's health. But then, like so many of us in this country, we have issues with eating. And that stems from emotional eating, stress eating, uh, disordered eating, that can be tied back to an event in one's life that could be trauma. It could be from tied to emotional or uh, verbal abuse over the course of one's lifetime that um, stems from uh, things that we have in our mind and in our brain. 
And so when we start dealing with emotional eating and disordered eating, we have to understand that that is an issue that's broad spectrum and spans every way of eating, vegan, plant-based, standard American diet, um, fruitivores, vegivores, omnivores, lacto-ovovores, every type of way of eating is the nutrition that we bring into our body. But when we have a disordered eating issue, we have to address it at that level. Um, and for me, I'm a stress eater and my stress eating goes, was tied back to, you know, things in my childhood that, that caused me stress. And so I had to work on those issues before I could get past my emotional eating. For me, if I was under stress, I would go to, I was never been a sweet tooth person. I would go to the starchy, crunchy, fatty things like crackers, potato chips, and that would be my source of comfort. And so that would be me. Now, I was never a binge eater where I would hide what I'm eating or be, how do I say it? We, where I would, you know, try and hide it from my family. I never did that. I just ate the wrong foods and too much of them. But with binge eating, there are many levels of binge eating. There's binge eating where you go get, sit in your car and you'll go to the drive food, drive through uh, donuts, drive through McDonald's, drive through Taco Bell, drive through anything, and you'll sit in your car and eat it because you don't want to be seen in public eating it or around your family. And that is one very large indicator of having a disordered eating with binge eating. And again, like I said, there are varying levels of binge eating. So regardless if you're plant-based or not plant-based, you can still have disordered eating regardless. Now, you're doing yourself a huge improvement with your health by eating whole food plant-based. You're reversing disease. However, you can still binge on whole food plant-based foods that's going to disrupt weight loss. And those items can be vegan crackers, they can be potato chips, because they're laden with oil and salt. So the first thing to do is to know your why. Your why has mm -hmm. to be stronger than your cause. And if your cause is something that you've been struggling with, now we all know, every single one of us knows why we binge eat or why we eat stress or why we, why we do what we do. Now, it's those of us who address it and want to deal with it are the ones that can find success in weight loss and in improved health and improved life. I mean, none of us want to be chained to an eating disorder. There is nothing good that comes from that in any way, shape, and form, whether it's anorexia, bulimia, binge eating, every type of eating disorder, it's, it's definitely something that affects your entire life, everything about your life. So you've got to get past that. And how do you get past that? Well, for me personally, it started with reading uh, this book. It's called Life with Ed by Jenny Schaefer. This is a book, it's called Life Without Ed, and Ed stands for eating disorder. She named her mm -hmm. eating disorder Ed. How One Woman Declared Independence from Her Eating Disorder and How You Can Too by Jen Jenny um, Schaefer. This is a fantastic book, and you can get it on Amazon. It's in every Kindle, audio, everything. So Life Without Ed. And then the other book that really helped with me was Never Binge Again, even though by Glenn Livingston, PhD. So again, it, not, it wasn't so much that I was a binge eater, but I just wouldn't stop. If I went to get a bag of potato chips, it was me in the bag of potato chips and until it was gone. And, and then, and if I, you know, and I'm a volume eater. So it's like I could never fill up no matter how much I ate. And again, when you're stressed out, or you have an emotional issue that you're not want, willing to work through, you got to work through it. And it really, really helps. And I recommend it all the time for those of us who have some level of disordered eating that you get some counseling. Talking to a professional does help in many cases. But if you don't like the first therapist you talk to, go to the next one. If you don't like that one, go to the next one until you are in sync with the right person 
And when that person can get inside your head, like they got inside my head, is when the magic happens. So there is no reason to be shameful about being a binge eater or a stress eater or any type of, of disordered eater. These are things that, you know, for a lot of us, no, by no fault of our own, we acquired just through being living the standard American diet. And we've decided that we really like sweet things and we really like starchy, salty, fatty things. And then we found that we're not drug addicts, we're not alcoholics, and most people who are binge eaters are um, people who are perfectionists and overachievers because we want to be in control, yet we're out of control with our eating. So there's a direct correlation between that being um, a, a high functioning person is also very much can be um, a binge eater. It's very common. And so getting underneath that is when, like I said, the magic happens. So of course, plant-based, and the more you can remove trigger foods like salt, not so much even salt, the big ones are sugar and fat. Those that have a big sensory spot on the tongue and sugar releases dopamine in the brain. And then you get into the addictive properties of sugar and fat and your brain just wants it. And then it becomes a chemical dependency, just like caffeine or alcohol. Your brain is going to say, oh, Nancy, where's your, where's your Ruffles potato chip today? We had that yesterday. We want it again. We want it now. And we don't want the small bag. We want the Costco size bag. And so that's Ed. That's, that's eating disorder talking to you. And so when you are, have, have the tools and you can work through those and by eliminating these high fat, high sugary foods in your diet is when you can start ad addressing your disordered eating. And that's, that's my recommendation, it's genes too. But again, these two books are phenomenal. Life Without Ed and Never Binge Again. And this is when I was able to get the next 50 pounds off of me because I too was whole food plant-based, I dropped the 50 pounds, but then I didn't address the volume eating and then getting the calm brain from really limiting the refined grains. For me, that was, that's an issue. A pasta, uh, you know, a little tiny serving of pasta is like, you know, a quarter to a half a cup. Not me, I'm the half a package of pasta. So my brain just, it never triggered being full for me, but complex carbohydrates like whole food starches with brown rice and sweet potatoes and potatoes, now, those are very satisfying, and they worked for me much better than refined grains. So that is my recommendation. I'm going to turn it over to Jean. She can share her experience with you, and just keep working at it. Work at it, work at it, work at it. For me, it was you got to get the, you got to get the house clean. That's the first step yeah. is you've yeah. got to get the stuff out of your environment because a lot of this, it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility. So making sure that your environment is clean and sanitized in terms of having the foods around because inherently we're kind of lazy, okay? So I'm not going to put my pajamas on, you know, I, I'm in my jammies and I'm looking, the inner raccoon is coming out looking for something else or I'm stressed or I want something. I'm not going to go put clothes on and drive down to the store and get something. I'm just not going to, not at, you know, eight, nine o'clock at night. So as long as you can have the, the house, you know, your, your, where you're living clean. And if you can't, <laughs> Chef AJ's got a lockbox. I mean, that she puts for her husband that they're, they're higher caloric density foods or things that nuts. she won't eat. Nuts, things like that. She has a lockbox that she puts in the refrigerator and he puts his stuff in there and she can't get to it. So, yeah, it, you know, for me, that would make me crazy because I would find a way to get into that box. So that would have been me. Gene I would have Schumacher picked the lock. The safe cracker. I would have. I would have. I would have found a way to get into the box. Not going to lie. And yeah, no. And you just got to make sure that there's, it's not in your path. Because I'm okay if it's not in my path. But if somebody comes and puts it up for me, you know, and we have a lot of, uh, you know, at, at school, we have a lot of events where they have food. And they'll put out cheese platters and, and things like that and crackers and, you know, it, it took a long time for me to be able to stay away from that and not, you know, have the inner raccoon driving me and making me want to go over there and get some of that. A couple of strategies is I always make sure that I'm full. 
I carry food with me all the time. My students make fun of me because I have an enormous cooler that I carry over my shoulder. Me too. And, me too. <laughs> and they make fun of me, you know, and I really don't care, but okay, fine. But I carry food with me all the time. And if I know I'm going to have events like this, I make sure I eat before I go to these events so that I can have the willpower. I shouldn't say willpower, but that I don't feel I have to eat this food because I know it's not going to help me. So it's not going to be healing for my body. And I also know that, oh my God, I'm so salt sensitive. So it's almost like that's keeping me on the, you know, the straight and narrow because I know it's yeah. going to raise my blood pressure. I'm going to have a huge headache and it's not going to be good for my body. So, right. That's so me. for me to, for me to Jody, the, the getting back to the why for why, when I went plant-based was for, to, to lose 125 pounds, I've lost 105 to get the weight off to, uh, hopefully reverse any heart disease and damage that I'd done the first 49 years of my life. And, and to prevent... says it's okay. Well, I had one polyp. I had a colonoscopy yesterday, and I sh I sent Jean pictures. <laughs> Jean knows what my colon looks like. We're friends. Yeah, yeah. There's a so, journey uh, you don't want to go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so, so I, you know, I sent Jean my colon, but uh, I did have a colonoscopy <laughs> yesterday, and I did have one polyp. And the doctor's words were diminutive sacral polyp, and they removed it. I guess it was pretty darn small. And it went to pathology. So, you know, what's most likely uh, benign, but we're going to see. We're going to see. And I really played and with the idea. Yeah. They were impressed that oh, at 55. Yeah. To go no to medications. Gl glow yeah. on that one. Yeah. So real quick, I want to say your why has to be right here in the front of your ba brain, Jody, and to other people who might be listening. You have to know your why. And for me... The why is my health. And like when Jean was talking about food that's at her school, I work for a very large manufacturing company and the vendors and suppliers, they don't bring in just one little box of donuts. They bring in a stack, you know, this high, like 14 dozen of Krispy Kreme crackers. And they just walk right by my office and they go to the break room and I say a little prayer for those people because I really wish that they were delivering fruit salad and veggies and fruits because they're those, my coworkers are just getting unhealthier and unhealthier and unhealthier. And I look at that food as Franken food. It does not exist in my world. I have created my world, which is plant-based and I decide what I eat and what I don't eat. And those processed types of foods are not my food. It's just, I, I drew the line in the sand. I was very much emotional when I watched Forks Over Knives and knew that my dad died unnecessarily with foodborne illness. And I knew right then that it was not going to be me and I was not going to put my kids through that. Because from the time I was a teenager, a young teenager, when my dad had his first open, or not open heart surgery, but his first heart attack at 47 years of age, it completely changed the dynamic of our family. We went to immediately into don't stress dad out because he could have another massive heart attack. He damaged 25% of his heart. And then it was just a horrible heart disease from then, there on out. So these are big events in my life that led to me being an emotional eater and a stress eater. So you've got to know your why. When you have your why and your why is more important than that bag of potato chips or that box of Krispy Kremes, then you're going to come to an impasse in your binge eating and you're going to say, yeah. I can do this. I got this. I can do this. And when you get there is when you're going to feel those chains release and know that you can be in control of your eating because it's our choice. You know, it's our choice. Nobody's forcing us to eat this way. It's just that your choice and your why has to be more important than, than the stress. And then when you work towards that every single day, one step, one step, one step, then you're going to have so many steps put together that your journey is going to be miles and miles long and the weight's going to be releasing and releasing and releasing. And before you know it, you're going to look over your shoulder and go, Okay, I'm making progress, but every day I'm a stress eater, every day I'm an emotional eater, and every day I have to work at that. But it's gotten so much easier over the last six years. Right. And it takes time. It takes yeah. time. It takes time and it takes practice and it takes, like Jean said, I cannot agree with Jean anymore. Your environment has got to be 
crystal clear. And if your family is not supporting you on your lifestyle and your choices, it's time to talk to your family. I talked with my husband. I talked with my daughters. They were not living with us at the time. Um, it was just my husband. And now my husband's lost 70 pounds, and he's, he's as big a supporter of this lifestyle as me. And he's very knowledgeable. And, and then when you get the family to buy in with you, it's the next step forward in your journey. And it just helps you get healthier and healthier. It's a great thing. But back to my to my colonoscopy yesterday. So I went in to the digestive place yesterday to have my colonoscopy. And, you know, you have to do the intake form. And I just go, you know, heart disease, all those liver cancer, blah, 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 blah. You know, four pages of all these questions. And I'm like, no, 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 never, 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 none, 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 no, 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 no. So then I hand them my forms and the registered nurse, uh, a guy probably in his early 50s, probably, you know, maybe a little younger than me. And he's going, you don't take any medications? No. Uh, you, don't, you don't have high blood pressure? Nope. He goes, wow, you're doing something right. And I said, yep, I have been living a whole food plant-based lifestyle for the last six years. And he said, hmm, well, keep doing what you're doing because it's working. So yeah. uh, that was pretty awesome, you know, because it's great. You know, and I only had one tiny little polyp, which I figured that was my my uh, little report card from the first 49 years of my standard American diet. So hopefully my six years of being plant-based shut that polyp down. So now it's out and we'll see what happens after that. I want to thank Jody for that question. That takes a lot of courage to ask a question like that. And again, Jean and I are always here to talk to you privately or wherever, you know, G Jody lives in Chico. We can always go for a cup of tea and talk more but you've made a huge step forward in in recognizing that you have this this way of eating that's uh that's making you slow down a little bit on your journey but you know what it's not a deal breaker it's just a speed bump Jean, well and both you I'm, know both of us both of us will be the first to admit hi i'm Jean Schumacher. i'm a food addict you know um hi, you'll I'm be Nancy the first Matthews. to admit yeah yeah, yeah. you're you know i'm an emotional eater I'm an yeah. emotional eater and food has always been my comfort. And that's one of the many ways all of us have been raised. And then right. if something in your life triggers something, then you link the, the trauma or the emotional event to whatever, you know, comfort food it is, use yours, then right yeah. there can be the beginning of a disordered eating practice. So our next question, Jean, do you want to take it away from this year? Would you like me yes. to read the question and you, you go read the answer. question? All yeah. right. Oh, so, I'm taking this one. Ooh, yeah. This is a good one. This is a yeah. Jean question. Yeah. All right. So those of you who do not know, Jean is has her doctorate in education, and she teaches both environmental sciences and chemistry, and she's right. a whiz at knowing a lot there is to know about parabens. So the next question is from Misty Underwood. I know we've talked about parabens before a big no-no. However, I'm hearing that there is more than one type of paraben, and some of them are good for you and even necessary. Is this true? Hi, Misty. Mm, Misty just yeah. popped on. I just see in that, time, Misty, Misty. Just in time, Misty, because, whoa. Just in time. <laughs> well, first of all, let's talk about what a paraben is. A paraben is short for parahydroxybenzoate, okay? Yeah. It's a class of preservatives, and it's used in cosmetics and personal care products, pharmaceuticals, and food, okay? Yeah. So all, com all commercially used parabens are synthetically produced. So hey, real quick, Jean, real, Jean, real quick, sorry to interrupt you, but hey, everybody that's listening, if you could share this on your Facebook page, Jean and I would appreciate it. Back at it, Jean. That was a commercial. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Take two. Sorry. <laughs> Go for it. Thanks. <laughs> So, all commercially used parabens are synthetically produced. Some of them are identical to the things that you're going to find in nature, but anything that's used in, like, cosmetics, things like that, that's going to be. But it's used, the whole point of the parabens is used to pre prevent, like, bacteria, yeast, and mold from growing in whatever the product is, because you, you don't want that. You know, there's six types of parabens that are most commonly used in personal care products, like methylparaben, ethylparaben, propylparaben, isobutylparaben, isopropylparaben, butylparaben, heptylparaben, paraben, and benzylparaben. Those are some of the most common ones, okay? And it doesn't matter which ones, 
there, anytime you see the ending, it says paraben. It is so They're all bad. Well, yeah. But I mean, even to like, and most people don't understand about this. And let me just diverge for one second. I broke my okay. wrist, and when I was up at the Cape, you know, I slid the ladder slid down and really crushed my. I mean, we're talking Humpty Dumpty, and so I had to have surgery on my wrist, and then I went for therapy. And when I went to go for therapy, she, the, the therapist, put this big tub of cream on the table, and I said, What's "Oh that? yeah, yeah, you told me about this. You told yeah. me, yeah." So I, I said, what's that? And she says, oh, I, I need to massage your wrist. I'm going to use this cream. And, you know, and I said, well, let me look at this. And I turned around and looked. Not one, three. Three parabens were in it. Not just three parabens. But there was a couple other chemicals in there that were some serious endocrine disruptors. And I said, yeah, no, we're not going to use that. So I pulled, you know, went over and pulled my Mary Poppins bag and pulled out some, a Pure Haven, you know, essentials product. And I said, we're going to use this. And I didn't say anything else. And I could just see, you know, the mental rolling of the eyes, you know, it, in her and I didn't say a word. I did not say a word. Finally she said after about ten you know minutes of massaging my wrist, okay, why? Why can't I use this? And I said, Well honey, it's, <laughs> it was it's, just it's, killing her. It was it just was. killing her. And it you know was. what? It's killing her. It, yeah, well, she's using too. this on every patient every yeah. day. And I said, you know, sweetie, mostly I'm doing this for you. I said, because in twenty six seconds that cream not only is in my bloodstream but you're massaging it on my hand, on my skin. She wasn't using gloves. She was he was massaging, you know, skin to skin. And I said, you've right. got that. How many times are you doing this a day? Ten? Ten times a day? Ten patients you see a day? She's like, yeah, about that. And I said, okay. So ten times a day, every day, you're putting three parabens into your system. And I, you know, she was in her early 30s, and I said, you know, you want kids? I said, you got kids? She said, no. I said, you want kids? I said, she said, yeah. And I said, then you better stop. I said, because the parabens have a huge impact. They're endocrine disruptors. So let's talk about it. Um, so you can find, you, know, you can see anything that ends with the word paraben, you know, on the back of it, that's what's going to have a problem. So there's essentially four major ones that they use in the cosmetic industry. There's methyl, ethyl, propyl, and butyl. So these compounds, you're going to find them. If you go into your bathroom, you're going to find them, okay? So let's talk about the methyl and ethyl parabens. Because these are both used to inhibit the bacteria and for, you know, uh, bacteria formation in these products, okay? So there's definitely concern about cancer and allergy issues. And one study showed with using the parabens in the presence of UV rays from sunlight that it causes DNA damage as well. And it's used in sunscreen, by the way. And this, okay? stu and this stuff is actually approved by the FDA. It just boggles oh, my it. mind. I, I know. Mm -hmm. So propylparaben is used to keep the water from separating or, you know, breaking out of solution so that it stays all mixed together. So some of the studies show that propylparabens have a ne negative effect on the male reproductive system, okay? So let's talk a little bit about the butylparabens. This is to keep funguses and things in mold growing in the cosmetics, and it can cause skin irritation and cause significant issues with your reproductive system. So what are some of the products where you're going to find these things? Hold on for one second. I just lost a sheet there. Okay. So where are you going to find these products? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Great question. Um, you're going to find them like in, in facial moisturizers, wrinkle creams, makeup, makeup removers, lotions, deodorants, sunscreens, concealers, eyeshadow, lipstick, and the list goes on and on and on. They pose, parabens pose a significant health risk. Even at concentrations under 1% when used in common cosmetics, but the problem is you're building these things up. So they're endocrine disruptors. Your endocrine interferes with the functions of, our hor of the hormones within our bodies. And our hormones you know, control everything within us. So these hormone disruptors act by mimicking natural hormones. Our bodies think. It's fooled by it. They're fooled by these imitation hormones, which rups, results in the corruption of our natural hormone process. So it thinks it's estrogen. It's not, but our body thinks it is. So on the females, so on, on the women who are doing this, it's going to have an impact someplace on your reproductive system. So it could cause issues, you know, within your, you know, within your, your uterus down there, cause a lot of issues. But most commonly, it's found in breast cancer. Okay. There was a study published in 2004 from the Journal of Applied Toxic Toxicology that detected 
five types of intact parabens out of 18 of 20 samples of breast tumors, okay? The chemical form of these parabens had been absorbed through the skin, through deodorant solutions, other personal care products, and the presence of these intact parabens in tumor tissue showed that not only did these chemicals are absorbed through the skin, but they also persist and accumulate without degradation so that they don't break down. But let's be clear, that study didn't prove that the parabens cause cancer, only that they were detected. Uh, okay, all right, fine. But, um, you know, me being me, I'm just going to, uh, I'm putting the, the, me being me, I'm going to put the link together to that because you find them in breast cancer cells and you have breast cancer. And uh, yeah, anyway, but to go back to your, to, to the question so that, you know, that's a little bit, I mean, and we've also known for like over 25 years that, you know, that estrogen exposure is linked to breast cancer, you know, development and progression. We know that. So it was my mom. Well, and, and it was the reason that tamoxifen is commonly prescribed to women with breast cancer yeah. because it's used to disrupt the estrogen receptors. So, Correct. yeah. So, you know, you have this. So it's not such a leap to be concerned that repeated cumulative long-term exposure to these chemicals that mimic estrogen are going to have an impact. Okay. So your question was like, you know, initially was like, is there anything, what, let me go back to ask it. Is there, there any, any good parabens? Good for, any good parabens? Good for you. Good for me? I've never, no, I am not, I'm, I'll be the first to admit, I am not the be all and end all of answers for this in any way, shape or form. But in anything that I have read, in all the literature that I have read, I have never once heard of this. So if you have a resource or, or some kind of, of link that you've been reading or heard. I, I would love to, to hear about this because I've yeah, I would never, too. I would never, I've never heard of parabens in any way, shape or form being good for you or for the human body. Nor have I. That's a great question. Oh, Very parabens, good question. Parabens make me crazy. They do. I know they, they really do. They really make me crazy. So, they're, uh, and they're so yeah, unnecessary. <laughs> Uh, Shirlene and Kathy both say that they use uh, Young Living products because of the paraben issue. And yeah, Young Living does have some a good product line with their essential oils. The only thing about Young Living is I also belong to Young Living for, I like a lot of different essential oils and they have their seed to seal program, but I don't recommend consuming essential oils. And that's one of the things with Young Living that as a whole food plant-based person who doesn't consume any oil, I don't consume essential oils. And I think that's a good question for Jean that I'm just going to ask you right now on Facebook Live. What is your take and opinion on consuming essential oils? I get these questions uh, frequently of, you know, uh, you see these recipes that are coming out through Facebook and online and they're calling for, you know, lemon essential oil. Why not just use the lemon, you know, or exactly. the lemon peel, you know, exactly. um, oil. So Dr. Caldwell Eschelston, his stance is oil is oil. Period. Agreed. Agreed. You know, Whether it's coming oil. from a lemon or it's coming from an olive, oil is oil. Yeah. And I'm not a big oil fan is oil. of it's that. High, but... highly concentrated. And also yeah. a lot of these essential oils are astringent. And I don't know that I would want something so highly concentrated in my food. So that's my only issue with, with Young Living is their recommendation on consuming essential oils. I'm, I'm not familiar with the Young Living, you know, the product line. I mean, I've heard of it and I've it's seen, a, it's, seen it's, it it's along with like, it. Mean, like Arbonne, Pure Haven yeah, Essentials. Yeah. No, it's a direct marketing company. Right. But, and I don't know the level of concentration of those. I don't all either. I know, all I know is like Pure Haven. I mean, I know the essential oils for Pure Haven. Oh my God. They are so concentrated that you cannot put them directly on the skin because they're that concentrated. Right. Yeah, you have and to they use will, a carrier oil. You have to use a carrier. And so I, I can't even think about putting that into my system. If I can't even put it on my, my external skin, I can't even right. think about putting it internally as well. Anyway, right. Yeah, I won't not, either. I'm, and also Young, Young Living also does have a symbol on their each individual essential oil, whether it can be ingested or not. So I don't, I would think that their concentration level is varying depending on if it's one you can ingest and one that you can't. Like and I so, said, I don't um, know enough about it. Yeah, I don't so. either. I, I know that their essential oils are great 
but I also really like Pure Haven Essentials. And one thing about Pure Haven Essentials, everything from that company is 100% toxic free, toxin free, chemical free, and their essential oils are from an organic source. They don't have a big a product line as Young Living, but theirs are organic and they're they're fantastic. We can give you some information on Pure Haven Essentials, but I, I just don't want to. Well, I um, want to jump to... in on this one. Shirlene Sandoz, as many companies use solvents, we create tons of problems. Oh, gosh, yes. Absolutely. Solvents are not. Re I mean, that's what you have to be able to. A solvent allows you to dissolve something into something else. So you've got right. to have that. And they use that in a lot of processing of essential oils, of personal care products. Yeah. I mean, in the process of making it. So, yeah, they're not good. Wow. Yeah. So one of the things, speaking of solvents, is one of the things with Pure Haven Essential is they, they don't have in their product line a makeup remover wipe that I'm aware of yet. Jean, do they have a, a, a makeup wipe? remover no. wipe? No, no, no. Yeah, they don't. see, they Not don't. Yet. So this, so we're talking about, we'll talk up coming up next will be our, fav, our favorite products for the week. But speaking of solvents, one of well, the wait, things Lisa that they use... Okay, oh. Lisa Sin has a question. Oh, I'm too. sorry, Lisa. Lisa Sin has a question, so I'll go ahead and say it. Lisa Sin is a question on starch. Or the starch. She's queens. one of our what starch you know? queen members, and she's, she's one, one of our starch queen, queen members. members. Yep, yeah. good. and she's doing phenomenal. She's at I 35 know. pounds lost so far, I believe, is the number. I know. Congratulations, yeah. Lisa. She's looking phenomenal. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh! Yes. Uh, Getting starch from potatoes versus vegetables. Can we eat them at the same time or better eaten separate? All right. Go for it, Jean. Or do you want me to go for it? You go for it. Okay. So, uh, Lisa, for me, um, the, the starch that's in plants, uh, it, it's there. I don't, I, don't, I don't take issue with separating my starches. I don't have salad at 8 o'clock and a potato at 9 o'clock and beans at 10 o'clock. I, I don't get into that. That's that's a rhetoric that I, I just don't, that's not me. No, um, my starches are combined. There is some um, conversation through the plant-based community about having your beans separate from your rice and sweet potatoes. But I, you know, it's not like I'm eating a can of beans or a pound of beans. I'm eating generally a half a cup of beans and beans have our a insoluble fiber and a resistant starch. So it's not like you're getting compounded starch between you, if you have beans and potatoes together. And if you have leafy greens, we talk about in our program meal sequencing. So we want you to start with your first starches. You know, have a big salad to fill up if you're in weight loss mode. Then have a, a nice soup that has potatoes or rice and beans in it that's uh, a little bit higher in caloric density. And then if you're still hungry, have a sweet potato. But you don't have to, you know, have them at different times of the day. And if you want to eat them all together at the same time, just remember that calories count. Everything when you're in weight loss mode matters with regards to calories. But um, separating the starches out individually between leafy greens and vegetables or fruits versus beans and potatoes is not a practice that I participate in. But I do like to... Um, to use meal sequencing, which, you know, it's always, it's a good practice to start with your greens to make sure that you get them in the form of a salad. And if that fills you up, great. If it doesn't, then move on to a soup or another calorically dense product, food like a potato and legumes as you're working your way up that bulky or heavier food that's going to be more calorically dense. So my answer is that for me personally, I don't worry about the crazy, you know, this starch, that starch, combined starch. I just make sure that I eat till I'm um, comfortably satisfied and that my starch to greens ratio works for me. If I have a super heavy starch diet, then my weight loss comes to a stall. I will plateau, but I don't ever gain. I don't eat so many calories in a day that I'm gaining weight, but I will plateau. When I want to go down the weight scale again, I start ramping up my starches from leafy greens and veggies because they have starch in them, but they don't have enough starch in them like a sweet potato or brown rice that's going to trigger the uh, stretch receptors in my brain and tell my stomach I'm full. So that is a, a, a happy medium place that you have to work 
to find out for you. And I've just found out over time through many trials and errors with eating is that I love starch and starch loves me. Um, I feel very energetic. I can run miles and miles and miles when I'm eating uh, sweet potatoes and brown rice. And, but if I back off and eat less starches and more greens and beans, then I find that my running the day after isn't as good as if I had brown rice or a potato that day. But I, I don't, you know, corn, potatoes, rice together. I actually will have mashed potatoes with corn mixed into it. It's absolutely delicious. How about you, Jean? I'm the same. I mean, the, the big thing is you want to eat, because especially like, like, if you go and eat a whole bunch of, like, starches, you know, like, like I always have, like, beans and rice or some kind of beans and lentil or something like that, and I have a big hearty dish. If I start eating that first, I'll eat that whole dish without question. Yeah. And, you know, if I eat my greens first and I start to bulk up and fill up on that first, then I don't eat as much. And often it's not, I will not eat that whole dish that I post a picture of what's in my cooler. I put put it on Instagram, I put it on Twitter, you know, in our Facebook group. And I'll post the, you know, the pictures. And, and a lot of times in that food, that's what I carry with me. I want to make sure I have enough food for the day. But a lot of times I won't finish that dish because I'm eating the greens first. So it's just eating those lower caloric density first. And then if you're going to mix your starches, that's fine. You know, it's not a big deal. Yeah. You know, you know. Back, um, back in the 90s, when I was doing one of my mini fad diets, there was the, the fen-fen craze. I'm sure that many of you listening in have remember the fen-fen craze. Well, I did fenfluramine and fenfentramine. The fenfluramine was what caused the heart valve to be damaged, and I was in that big lawsuit, and um, they, I took enough of it. I was right at the ha at the point where I needed to have the sonogram, the echocardiogram to check my valve. And fortunately it was fine. But the doctor that I was going to and prescribing the FenFen also prescribed a, um, a, a, a Atkins-esque diet. But there was a period of time in the 90s that I was plant-based. It was when I first wa read the Dr. McDougall book, his weight loss book. And so I was doing that, but I wasn't doing it correctly. So I wasn't losing weight. And a friend of mine started doing FenFen -fen, and she lost the weight just overnight. And I was like, well, I want in on that. You know, I've, I can take two pills a day. Big deal. That was the biggest mistake in my life. I never slept. I, I felt like a you know, a tweaker. And I, I mean, I just was so, I can't, I'm so sensitive to any type. Yeah. You know, you're so amped up on, uh, on, um, what is it called? A uh, stimulants, you know, I've never I mean, that's heard what a tweaker. Oh yeah. You know, people who use methamphetamine in California are called tweakers. So okay. basically I was just <laughs> yeah, agitated. I, I live under a rock. So yeah. I'm on, Jean. Get a back into, rock. The, into the throw of things here. So I anyway, guess. it was a big mistake. I couldn't sleep. So the fen fentramine makes you, was the appetite suppressant, but the fenfluramine was to bring you down so you could sleep. So long story short, I go to this doctor and he's telling me, you know, you need to eat meat. And I'm like, I'm not eating meat. And so he said, you need to have your rice and beans together to get your all of your long branch chain amino acids. And we know that was a misnomer for many years. Oh, yeah. You know, is all it you gotta have one rice study. and beans? A rice and, yeah, from one study. Yeah. And it's like who yeah, who funded the study? You know, so but but my doctor, you know, he sat right across from me, he goes, You gotta eat your rice and beans together and I was like think so you know it's not what dr mcdougall said in the 90s yeah. and i just went okay you know but i went about my my life and i lost 25 pounds and then i quit taking the fenfluramine crap because i told pulled it from the market and i was you know lost 25 pounds and felt horrible horrible mm. and so but it and gained it all back plus some so again it was just one of those situations where you know doctors unfortunately that didn't know giving advising on nutrition where it really wasn't their forte. He was actually an endocrinologist and so not a, didn't have a nutrition background, but yet was, tr you know, prescribing fen, fen here in town and bad deal, bad deal. So 
And we know if you read Dr. Garth Davis's book, Proteinaholic, or you've been, you know, in the plant-based community long enough to know that when you eat a broad spectrum plant-based diet, you get your protein from all plant sources. You do not have to combine a starch and a legume to get all of the amino acids. You get them all throughout the day consuming a balanced whole food, a, a balanced plant-based diet. Absolutely. So tell me about the makeup yeah. remover wipes. Okay. So again, if Pure Haven Essentials had a makeup wipe, I would definitely choose it over Honest Company. But I don't want to use, I was comparing Honest Company uh, makeup remover wipe. You got to read the ingredients. My light's making it reflecting here. Read those ingredients and find out if there's parabens in there. And especially like uh, Shirlene was saying is, is um, uh, what was it she was saying? Dissol dissolvents? Yeah. Gene? Solvents. You know, solvents. solvents, you know, because eye makeup remover has got to cut through even waterproof mascara. But I really am liking and have used for a long time Honest Company makeup removers. Now, they're not great, great, great. You have to put a little elbow grease into getting the mascara and the eye makeup off, but it does remove it. But then my other favorite, and then, um, yes, sir, ma'am? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Pure Haven has a makeup remover. Why don't you I just know, spray it's a squirt it? bottle. I don't like it. It doesn't, it doesn't just work. Just spray for it me. on a cotton pad and wipe it on your face. I have, I have, Jean. That's one of the, one of the products from Pure Haven Essentials for me doesn't work for me. Yeah. Wait, it just doesn't. I, I want to know what kind, of makeup, what kind of makeup you're using that it won't cut through. Vegan. <laughs> <laughs> All vegan okay. and organic. All right. So. <laughs> So I've just been using this for like as long as they've been selling it and um, okay. I order it from their website and I'm waiting for Pure Haven to come out with one that I know will be organic. And this is, this is not organic, but it does work and it has, doesn't have 1900 ingredients in it. <laughs> but what I follow, okay. what I follow it up with is a Norwex makeup remover microfiber towel and I've got the uh -huh. one blue one, a pink one, and a green one. Now, Norwex is a Canadian company, also very um, earth conscious, environmentally correct, and they have a great line, chemical-free products. And a friend of mine sells Norwex. I really like these makeup remover claws. You simply get them wet, and then after I do the makeup remover with the Honest Company wipes, I'll go just take nice warm water, and I'll just get all of the residual makeup off and the two of them together. And it's just water. This is just a microfiber uh, makeup remover. Why don't you towel. try that with the Pure Haven? I have. The makeup I, remover. I didn't. Again, the, the makeup remover for Pure Haven just did not work for me. So I don't know. But anyway. All right. Even with the Norwex. I love everything plot. else. Even with the Norwex. <laughs> even with plot. the Norwex. Okay. Yep. I tried, I tried, I tried the whole bottle. So, uh, all right, we'll have again, to get the industrial strength one. Apparently, for you. I'm, apparently, apparently, I'm using stucco for makeup. <laughs> apparently, Bondo. Bondo or stucco. Gosh, at 55, you got to do a little patchwork here. Oh there. my god, good grief! All right, <laughs> all right, so that is all of our questions for tonight. Does ah. anybody who's watching? Oh, what yes, I want to share my product. These oh, are, gosh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, my Thank husband you. Is cooking. My plant-based husband's cooking, and I'm smelling what he's cooking, and I'm like, I want some of that. Okay. Well, <laughs> Nick, lucky, for, you that, lucky you, Nick cooks. My, my husband can boil water. That's about it. Oh, um, I am very fortunate. Nick's a fabulous cook. Oh, you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, he's in the background going, yeah, no, I can't boil, boil water. Okay. <laughs> so this one is my, this, and you can't see it. The, the two things that I absolutely love from Pure Haven Essentials, and, I, you know, they have a, a, a facial, whole facial line of things to take care of. So this is called the Refresh Night Serum. And I absolutely oh, I love, love this. In I love it, that stuff. Oh, my God, right? In conjunction, you want to use it with the, I love, this is the um, eye cream. And then they've love got it. a good moisturizer, but I just go straight for the eye cream and use that for my whole moisturizing face. So like oh, my you use it for on your whole face? Oh, God, yes. 
Oh, oh see, I, I did. I didn't do that because I thought it was like really just you know patting it under my eyes and. No, oh, no. I used they need to put that face. like in you know in a quart jar because it's <laughs> yeah. wonderful. Yeah, but stuff. you know what? Even like this jar, even like it's small, this jar will last like months. I'm not kidding because you just need a little dab. So here's what I do. This is what I do at nighttime. So I take a hot cloth as hot as I can stand it. I put it on my face and open up the pores. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I just put it on, and it feels so good. It's just so relaxing. Oh, it's like a spa day. It is. It is. And then what I do is I put some of this on. This is called the the the, uh, the Refresh Night Oil Serum. And I put that on first. And then I to seal it, I put in the eye cream on top of it. I mean, a dab. A dab here, 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 here. And then put that on top. And then, the because especially this night serum, holy crap. This has got the CQ10 in it because as we start to age, we start to lose that CQ10. Oh my so God. Those, so people don't know, understand CQ is CoQ10. CoQ10, yeah. CoQ10. So, whatever. It, it, that thing. And it is amazing for the next day. And I, don't, and I don't do it every night because I forget. Like there's some nights when I get, you know, get to bed and I brush my teeth and I fall into bed. But the nights I do it, I get up the next day and it's like, honey, I know. my face. It's true. I know. I know. It's I know. true. It's, it's good. It is I got when, it. I heard you, you the first 25 times. Yeah, it feels, I know. It feels smooth. But baby's it's amazing. Bottom. Baby's bottom, we're talking. I mean, yeah. your face is just yeah. incredible. So the two of these together, I just love the night serum and the, the eye cream together. I mean, they oh, have a great, great moisturizer, but I use this for as my moisturizer. And it's so, it smells that so good. The, it does. Dang it. It's like <laughs> driving with Nancy in the morning. Bug after me. <laughs> For those of you who are not in our Starch Queens program, I'm telling you, every morning I do a driving with Nancy on the way to work on a topic, and oh my gosh, every morning there's always some event when you're riding, riding along with me, but Jean, when you turned me on to Pure Haven Essentials, and when I got my first order of the eye cream and the night, the night serum, I was sold on the spot. It's so inexpensive, and it's just natural, mm. wonderful products, and I was like, I holy it. cow, and look at your skin. It's breathtaking. It's beautiful. Awesome. Lanny, Lonnie. Now we have a Lanny in the group and we have a Lonnie in the group. So Lonnie wants to know if she can find and where she can find an almond milk that doesn't have a lot of ingredients in it. And Lonnie. You can make your own. Make your own. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a Vitamix or a high speed blender, just yeah. make your own, you know, like a yeah. uh, a cup of a cup I don't even think it's a cup it's like a half a cup of almonds to a pitcher full of water blended in high speed in your Vitamix or your Blendtec and you have almond milk uh, you can Done. run it through a nut bag a nut filtration yeah. bag that can get really inexpensive on Amazon or at yeah. any local health food store um, I'll, I'll send you the link Lonnie to a nut bag I'm not sure if you have a Vitamix or not or a nut or a Blendtec but you definitely need a uh, to have a, a high Vitamix power. to make your yeah. a high flour blender to make your own nut yeah. milk, but yeah, but you're you're right, Lonnie. It's really hard to find an almond milk without any additives. So when I'm making like soy milk, I use um, or yogurt. I tried it with almond milk. It just doesn't turn out good. So I use soy milk and West Soy. The brand West Soy mm -hmm. is two, it's two ingredients: organic soybeans and water. Now, soy yeah. milk does not have the flavor of almond milk, but I have give you a little bit of a trick. You know, Jean is, um, talks about how she likes coconut extract. You can use soy milk and put a couple drops of almond extract in it and gives you the almond milk flavor. It's very good. And it's uh, two ingredients, soybean oil, or not soybean, soybeans and water. And that's the only two ingredients. And you can yeah. just put some almond extract in it and it and it tastes just like almond milk. So a little tip there. Good to know. Get around that. Good, Good to, to know, know, huh? Yeah, I learned you know, something little, tonight. Yeah, and you can and it helps when you're making yogurt because I make like to make yogurt in the instant pot, and you can use a little bit of the um, of any flavored um, uh, extract, vanilla. Some people like a vanilla soy milk or a vanilla almond milk, so you can use a little vanilla. Or a little and a little almond extract in it, and you're getting only a two ingredient um, plant based milk. All right, well, I think that wraps up the Starch Queens talking Tuesday. It does. So, so we want to invite if uh, let everybody know 
Uh, the Starch Queen's website is full of information on plant-based living. You can go to starchqueens.net. Yeah. There is wonderful cooking videos there. And Jean, for those that you don't who don't know, Jean Schumacher is the artist behind the cooking videos on Dr. McDougall's website. So all of yeah. those cooking videos are Jean's handiwork. So good job. Those are fantastic. I love those videos. Uh, well, that educational gave information. me... Yeah, well, those, those, I learned so much because it was a huge learning curve to make those videos, but I've gotten really good at it now. But, and in case you don't know, on starchqueens.net, under the weight loss program, there's two packages that you can buy for videos that have like six, seven, eight different recipes in it. And I make the, vi I teach you how to make it, and then I give you the recipe as well. So you get both Great for $9.99. Yeah, nine ninety nine Cheap. for a package, and it's got seven, yeah. eight recipes in it. And you can go on there, the StarchQueens.net under weight loss doc, under the weight loss tab, and it's there the video recipes. But there's tons of others under right. the recipe tab, under the video tab. There's lots of recipes there that I made from Dr. McDougall's uh, Maximum Weight Loss Program. There's a lot there. There's a lot of recipes. Yeah, there's a lot of research. Some people go on vacation well, for you know for their breaks. I build websites, so. Yep, you do. Yes, and it's really great, too, because there's a lot of resources there <laughs> yeah. on educational information on how to adopt a plant-based lifestyle. Plus, we have all of our, the links to all of our plant-based towns on yeah. Facebook. So if you're watching and you're struggling with weight loss, um, we'd love to help you. You can go to sqweightloss.com, yeah. sign up. You'll get a day's worth of free Starch Queens recipes. No, and more than that, you are, more than that. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, not for just signing up. Not just for just signing up. It's more than a day now. Oh, I thought it was to, just to, to sign just, up for the Starch Queen weight loss program. We oh, give no, you a you'll bunch get a of bunch of recipes. Right. But no, just to give us your email address and to join our email group, we give you a yeah. day of Starch Queen's recipes that are our right. our recipes that we developed. So sign up. Give us your email. We don't spam you, but we are working <laughs> on um, we haven't even sent a. We haven't set, even sent an email to anybody yet. We've got about 700 emails in our, in our um, database, but we just are, we're busy. And so we're working on a, on a next sales promotion. So we're working on our email. So you'll get one every now and then, but we're not, we're not spammers in any yeah, way, no. shape, or form. <laughs> So we are going to yeah. get better, better about doing emails that has information yeah. on it. We want to yeah. thank you for joining tonight. Please. Oh, I want to mention real quick. Chris Tarango, she uh, mentions you could use the two ounce packet of almond butter to make almond milk. And you wouldn't necessarily need a high speed blender if you are using almond butter, which is a great tip, Chris. She's an expert. And so that's a fantastic uh, tip. So I like those, um, the organic almonds, uh, butter in the little packets. Those are fabulous for backpacking and hiking. So make your am almond butter with that. It's a great tip. All right, everybody have a fantastic day. Thank you high for five. joining the Starch Queens. High five, high five. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you next week. Have yeah. a wonderful evening and be All sure right. and share this because we want, we would like to reach as many people as we can. Right. Good night. Night, John boy. Night, Mary Ellen.